We're looking at a uh, burr clover right now. Um, burr clover is called burr clover because it puts off these little round spiky wheels that go dormant in the um, summer and will live throughout all extreme temperatures or you know just harsh environments until the weather's perfect and then they'll um, come back. And um, you can see they've got little teeny, they're like little tires, um, little spiky tires and they look nice and soft and all that right now but <clears throat> once this plant dies or these fall off or dry out this becomes a huge tangled mass of really um, spiny hard spines and they're really you know uncomfortable to touch you can you don't even want to grab this um, they're so spiny so um, the second that they start flowering um, these flowers are just starting they haven't even opened yet um, and you've got different parts of the plant that are already have already flowered so it's already this is after the flower it puts these off um, burr clover is a wonderful um, ground cover it covers it um, covers dry barren areas like that turns it into this which then allows all sorts of plants and other undergrowth to live and um, create shade and um, allows bugs and different things that live there um, its main function as far as um, human needs and stuff goes is that it it provides a um, it provides a, a nitrogen to the soil and uh, it actively eats toxins and radiation this is a radiation eating plant and uh, typically grows about three feet um, round from one small root at the bottom will grow out many 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 feet and um, this is your this is a typical you know so many months of growth that's already to over two feet or I mean a foot and a half so um, nevertheless by um, in wet conditions it's easiest to uproot these and it's best to just uproot the, uproot the whole thing and um, like I'm saying the uh, these things actively eat the soil so they're really good for all sorts of um, soil that uh, needs to be cleaned and um, there's different types of plants that do different things to the soil and um, the burr clover allows nitrogen to go back in the soil nitrogen is a life source for most things you need nitrogen this is the root ball of a, um, of a burr clover okay and these little root balls here are not like normal roots. See this right here? This, these things, okay, are organs. Are not they're not organs, but just for inten all intents and purposes, let's let's say that's like an extra organ. This plant's root balls have extra little products on there, and these little products. I don't know the name of them, but these are actively eating and absorbing radiation. Okay, you see these little things here? These are not egg sacs. These things eat radiation. These things are some magical product that basically turn bad stuff into good stuff. These are adding nitrogen into the soil. And um, they're little teeny growths. This is part of the root ball. You see you got normal roots. And then all throughout the root balls, you've got growths. And these little growths right here are reconditioning the soil. And um, this is what it means when someone, like a botanist or someone selling you a plant or something, says that it might, you know, promote, you know, um, nitrogen to the soil. That's what that is. It's a little teeny growths on the root balls that allow that to happen. These plants are excellent for providing ground cover, like I said. Um, the reason I'm uprooting them is because I actively grow them to maintain the soil and uproot them in the late winter. This is spring right now because they're already um, putting off a lot of spiky balls and stuff. And um, I grow a lot of medicinal plants in here. And these are this is chicory and um, this is um, chamomile and I'm going to 
eat those later and um, this is um, I don't know what it is but it's edible and um, it's got a long red it's that plant right there with the red stem tastes great less filling um, anyway you know noxious weeds these are all noxious weeds and um, they're really good for the soil let's just my main point and show you um, what the spikies look like and these are not true um, you can see how these will fall to the ground these this is not actually a clover most if not all clovers I believe are edible and um, are medicinal products and uh, red clover is a really old ancient medicinal product that's been used forever and still used obviously all plants are used but just not legally because our government makes it illegal to promote the sale and use of medicinal natural medicinal products from plants because our government's made drugs from all of these and they don't want you to you know be healed from cancer right now or radiation that's in our air uh, it's pretty sad because you know all these plants will cure your cancer um, it's a known fact, you know, that's why indigenous peoples don't have cancers and diabetes is a new concept to their bodies and that's why you have people in Asia are first time in, you know, their tens of thousands of years starting to get diabetes. It's not a um, something that you should be donating any, not even five cents to any cancer company or any kind of pharmaceutical company to do research on anything. These people are taking your money and they're investing into McDonald's and Monsanto stocks. Um, it's a well-documented fact, you know, diabetes, cancers, AIDS, um, you know, these are all viruses that have been created. Well, diabetes isn't a virus, but they've all been created um, artificially um, in our environments and not, uh, to not a natural situation. And um, that's why all naturalists don't have these problems. And, um, you know, like I said, in places like Japan and China, where their body fat is usually, you know, perfect and, you know, for 10,000 years. And now, you know, your average Japanese kid, you know, Chinese kids got diabetes. You know, it's a joke. It's, it's, it's not part of their culture. It's not from something that they did that day or the way that they were raised or born. It's because of the McDonald's and the different foods that they're eating and it's not McDonald's fault I mean you know I'm not trying to be an activist um, you know it's just um, basic cultural upbringing and their parents choose to not feed them proper food anymore you know it's a simple fact um, whoever whatever race or wherever you're at you know you want to eat whatever's convenient you want extra butter on that you know popcorn well, enjoy your food I'm going to go eat a handful of stinging nettles and I'm going to live another 40, 60 years without any wrinkles because I'm 40 years old and I'm height weight proportionate and never even broke out with acne, you know. You think they tell you, you know, that acne is some normal pubescent, you know, thing. It's not, you know. It's just, once again, it's people not taking care of themselves. Peace. Remember, this right here, this plant right here is most chemicals and drugs are made from just this alone. If this is one of the only plants ever alive that we could grow, or if you only had a choice, you can make most medicines and drugs and products to live in and all sorts of things. It's what we do with chemicals. You know, we make synthetic products and we make houses and all sorts of stuff out of plants. I mean, you know, clothes, everything. This is chamomile. This is considered a noxious weed. This is pretty much illegal to sell and grow and have. They would uh, say that you were, you know, ruining the neighborhood or something, you know. It's a moral thing, you know. Learn, you know, educate yourself. Peace.